Hello, this is experiment number nine, alternating current circuits. Have you ever wondered how do radio receivers know which frequency to pick from many radio frequencies? The working mechanism behind it is the resonance phenomena. Before we discuss about resonance, let's clarify about what is an AC circuit. There are two types of circuits. A DC circuit stands for direct current circuit, and the other is an AC circuit which stands for alternating current. The current in DC circuits always flow in the same direction, whereas AC circuits, the current will change the flow direction of flow half of the time. Because the voltage source is varying the value at every moment. In this diagram, the current flow in the clockwise direction and then in flow in the counterclockwise direction. Here we represent the voltage by a function V of T. The voltage from a wall socket will fluctuate as a psi function. We can write this volt voltage as the amplitude, which is uppercase V times psi of omega t. The uppercase V is the amplitude of the voltage from the source. We find that it is much easier to analyze the circuit if we think of this kind of function as a vector rotates about the center with angular frequency ang sorry angular velocity omega where omega is 2 pi f where f is frequency of the voltage this is the concept of a phasor diagram Here, the amplitude of the function is represented as a vector, and as the vector rotates at each moment, the projection of this vector onto the y-axis is the value of the function v of t. As you can see here, the shadow of this vector represents the voltage at that particular time. Now, let's talk about how the voltage across each ele circuit element combine in the RLC series circuit. From Kirchhoff's rule, the sum of the voltages must equal to the voltage from the source here, the voltage across the resistor is V sub R, where uppercase V is the amplitude of the function, and it is equal to I R. Also, for V L, it is equal to I times XL, where XL is called inductive reactance, and this reactive inductive reactant is equal to 2 pi times frequency and L, which is the inductance of the inductor. For VC, it is represented by I x sub c multiplied by the sine of omega t minus 90 degrees 
XC is called a capacitive reactance. These voltages are sinusoidal functions. So you cannot just add the amplitude of each voltage together. Again, we need to resort to the phasor diagram. If we look at these functions, we will find that VL leads VR by 90 degrees and we see lags we are by 90 degrees. The current is in phase with we are. These four vectors will rotate at the same angular speed, which is omega here. To combine the voltage across the whole branch, first, suppose VL is larger than VC, then VL minus VC is represented by this vector. Oh, here I forget to tell you that VL is IXL, VC is IXC, and VR is IR. Now, we will find VRLC by the Pythagorean theorem because VL minus VC is perpendicular to VR. So it forms a right triangle. Then VRLC is equal to square root of VR square plus VL minus VC square. In the part one of the experiment, we'll see if this is correct or not. We will measure uppercase VR, VL, and VC. Then we will see that VRLC follows this equation. So we conclude that we must think of this as a vector quantities. Now we call the voltage across all three elements as VRLC. We already know that VRLC is equal to the square root of VR plus square, sorry, a VR square plus VL minus VC square. We will replace VR by IR and VL by IXL and VC by IXC. Because, because I is the common factor, we can pull it out of the square root sign. What's left is the square root of R square plus XL minus XC square. This term is called impedance or Z. The impedance is analogous to resistance in DC circuit, where it will control how much current can flow. The Ohm's law for AC circuit is voltage is equal to I times Z. Consider the impedance for RLC series circuit. R, L, and C are fixed values. However, impedance is not a constant here. It depends on frequency from the source. If you consider the term in the parentheses, for most of the frequencies, this term has a non-zero value, except for when XL equals XC. When this term is not zero, add this to R squared it makes the impedance 
larger compared to when this term is zero. At the condition when xl equals xc, the impedance becomes minimum. This is the condition for resonant phenomena, and this condition leads to the resonant frequency equal to 1 over 2 pi square root of L times C. As mentioned before, the impedance varies as we change the frequency. For small frequencies, XC will dominate. As frequency increases, XC becomes smaller, so is the impedance. At a specific frequency, the impedance becomes minimum. If we continue to increase the frequency, now the impedance gets bigger as XL will dominate. Because the amplitude of the voltage is a constant from Ohm's law, V equal IZ. We can conclude that when the impedance is a minimum, the current will become a maximum. This is how a radio receiver knows how to pick the right station. It is by adjusting the value of L and C to match with the frequency from the station. Now, let's look at the resonant phenomena in RLC parallel circuits. Here we connect L and C parallel to get to each other. Let V represent the amplitude of the voltage across inductor and capacitor. In parallel circuits, we know that the voltage across each device is the same. However, the current in the flow, the current flow in each element differs. We find that IC leads IR where IL lacks IR and IR is in phase with VR. In the phaser diagram, it will look like this. So the current flow in the main circuit can be found using the phaser diagram. Suppose IL is larger than IC. The difference between IL minus IC is a vector pointing downward and IR point to the right so the main current is the vector sum of the two vectors. Using the Pythagorean theorem again, we find that the main current equals to IR squared plus IL minus IC squared. Now we can replace IR by V over R prime. IL by V over XL and IC by V over XC. Here, the voltage across each element is the same. We can pull it out of the square root sign. Again, using Ohm's law, V equal IZ, 
the impedance is written as 1 over square root of 1 over r prime square plus 1 over xl minus 1 over xc square. This is the impedance for the parallel circuit. Now let's look at the graph of the impedance versus frequency. For small value of frequency, XL will dominate XC. As a result, the impedance is low. Increasing frequency will make the impedance smaller. Once the frequency equals the resonant frequency, the impedance becomes minim maximum. After that value, the impedance will decrease to zero again. What about the main current? Following Ohm's law, if the voltage is constant, then the current will go down as impedance goes up. and it dips to a minimum at the resonant frequency. The condition for the resonant frequency here is the same as in the RLC series circuit, which is FR equal to 1 over 2 pi times square root of L times Z.